Guys, just want to talk about MGTOW and feminism. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is it's, I know uh, JC, uh, JC from Holland brought up, it, is it being brought out as a response to feminism? I would say it's, a lot of it is to do with feminism that's actually brought this about. Um, because like, like I've brought before, health and safety started off with a very simple plan on what it was going to do and an entire industry was built when you used to have governance governance used to be based on um voting and the power of majority power of majority is the vote of all the highest votes obviously makes the decision that's all been skewed now what you've got is those that shout the loudest get the most opportunities and those opportunities are where we're seeing a shift in everything. Because if you go against a lot of this stuff, you're a sexist, a racist, um, ageist. There is always a kick going back to you that tries to push down your argument. And when you look at the media coverage in a lot of the news articles relating to let's just take the let's just take the police women that were um, wanting the fam family friendly hours so they work daytime and then you've got the guys that are working the night shifts the weekends and get a shift allowance they got that shift allowance because it's, it was seen as unfair although that is a prime example of no you're not entitled to it and that's what I anybody with a bit of common sense would have said the opportunity is there for them to cover the same hours the opportunity is there to turn around and say get you you can do one weekend in four you can do two evenings a week you can do exactly the same as the other other people do but instead the legal system says well you're right because you're you're a police woman you're still working even though you're not actually working the same shift in fact Everyone else here is accommodating you because everybody else here is having to do at least one extra shift a week to cover the ones you don't because you're entitled to family friendly hours. Um, this is where things have become very skewed and at no point does anybody say that response. You turn around and say, well, you know what? Not only are you not entitled to the money, but you're also selfish. Other people have lives as well. Just because you have kids does not automatically give you a right over everybody else. But that's what they're allowed to say. And that's what they're allowed to push. They push the agenda that they're entitled to not only the same as, but more than. Because if a guy said, you know what? There's family friendly hours. Let's all, everybody in here, go on that. Let's see how well things function. That, because that's what I'd recommend doing. And as soon as you do that, then suddenly you're, you're sexist or something else. Because there is this false thing pushed. I, I think it was the head of um, Saatchi and Saatchi that was talking about the corporate women. Because he, he understands that they don't put the same level of commitment in. And it's nothing wrong with it. This is the annoying thing. There is nothing wrong with family life. You cannot blame somebody else for you wanting to do something different. There is nothing wrong with that, but they do. Because for, um, it, I think it was Peterson that said there's about 24 to 28 different things you've got to take into account when you're talking about um, how you evaluate the pay gaps and the the work, why there is a, you know, more men doing certain things than women, etc. Because there are so many things. Family life is one. The way people think is different is another. There is a whole ream of stuff that actually dictates, and it does dictate because it's actually built into you, it's ingrained. It's not a men are doing this and holding women back or whatever, because I come from the corporate world. There is nothing that held any woman back in my job, ever. What you've had is 
They want to be at home at the weekends. They want to do two days in Dubai, where I'm doing four and a half months. They they want to um, not do the nine months away in a hotel. They want to be in the office in the afternoon, looking at their watch at half past three, thinking I'm going to go go home, pick kids up or whatever. While we're still there at eight o'clock at night, because when we finish doing the stuff we do on the office side we're then going over the stuff for the following week because we're not responsible just for our daily work we're responsible for other people as such we set the targets for other people we we solve the issues relating to business problems outside our normal work as well and we're not even paid for that but i don't sit there saying that's something against men that's just part and parcel of the corporate world and those people that clock in, clock off, and make these decisions are often from an environment that does not recognize that you have to be more committed to a business. You're talking about people from housing associations. You're talking about people that are from councils and stuff. Their working environment does not involve the same level of commitment. End of. I mean, I remember when I was at the Norfolk and Suffolk, because I was there with Donovan. Donovan was a private contractor as well. Now, I used to get into the office at half past six in the morning, especially when you first start, in at half past six, and I would leave at about eight, nine o'clock at night. Why? Because there's a backlog. Difference between me and the other people that were there? Um, first one is that I'm hourly anyway, so I get paid every hour I work, and I, this is part and parcel of why I do it. But also, the commitment was to get the um, targets hit. The, there is a deficit. There is a failure rate. There was about 60 complaints a week, I think it was, when I first went there, and that went down to zero within the space of a month. Zero complaints. Because what had happened is, you got one guy that quite simply got suspended because he was drunk in the afternoon. He was sat in the pub found by somebody else. Um, but everybody just clocks in and clocks off, regardless of what's in the in their in tray. And the NHS is the same, and social services is the same, and all these organisations that shout, "I have a right, I have this, I have that," nice ring fence pension that's linked with inflation, um, do not live in the same environment that most of us do, where we don't have these safety nets. When I was at Birmingham University, there was a guy there that had a problem with me changing the system because he works on MySQL. He complained to health and safety, my desk was not big enough. My monitor was too small. I didn't have a second keyboard for my laptop. I didn't have the X, Y, Z. And as I, the health and safety guy come around and doing an assessment, I just said, I don't even work for you. It's none of your business. Because I recognize the difference. These people make a industry out of doing nothing. These are the ones that shout, I have a right. I have a right. I have a right to take something from you. I have a right to a healthcare service that I don't pay for. I have a right for... Don't get me wrong. When we were talking about pensions, pensions is part and parcel of why... I do think we need a fundamental change in the UK, and I do think there's a fundamental problem in the NHS. But when people sit there and tell me that, oh, well, you're not entitled to a pension, or to be spent, could have spent it on the last generation, that is not my problem. At the end of the day, that's the government's problem. If I was a business doing that, it'd be called fraud. Um, now, I have no problem with the government reimbursing me everything I've paid into the system, and I'll quite happily go in manage myself because I can guarantee I can manage it way better than the government could um, but at the same time it's because we have this system where people think they have entitlement to everything it's the same when you get um, I think it was Liverpool where you got a council I think the, I'm trying to think uh, was it Morrissey it might be Morrissey because there was a because they wouldn't have the ability to pay, say, four million pounds, what's wrong with having 60 million spent? Because if you can't pay back the 60 million, what's the difference between the four million? Because you might as well spend way more um, 
Well, the answer to that was I think it ended up killing the high street and a lot of jobs because it does get recovered somewhere. <laughs> but there's a prime example, and that's socialism in some ways. Socialism fu- doesn't function because the the model is failed as soon as humans are involved. The party members in a lot of these countries that have socialism that are pushed, um, they do better than everyone else. They're more equal than everyone else. Um, capitalism's flaws are down to humans. At the end of the day, we're sitting in an environment where people need to inject a lot more common sense in their daily life. And this is why I do focus on the 17 to 30 year, 30 year olds, because that's where you make your most money. You, you're, you're in the right environment. Sorry, you're in the wrong environment, but in the right time to actually generate the most revenue and set yourself up for life and do whatever you want. Um, because once you have made some of the mistakes that occur, for example, going out and buying a brand new car instead of that 200 pound car and saving for one if you really want it, um, you're locking yourself into debt. Debt, debt is going to be a burden that will carry on and carry on because quite simply that's the culture that is pushed upon you. Debt is good. Debt is the way to go. When they evaluate the economies now, especially the UK, they talk about retail spending on the high street. Spending is how you base an economy. Not based on output, not based on import, imports v export. No, spending. How much was spent on the high street? Let's ignore the real figures because that's so scary. And we're going to say that you need to buy a new iPhone for your daughter this year because she deserves it because everybody's got a new iPhone. And I remember seeing that in the Philippines. Um, that was one of the Christmas shows where they were talking about, you know, somebody should get an iPhone for Christmas. I just thought, that's so disgusting. You know, the, try, you know, there's far bigger problems in the Philippines than the bloody iPhone. Um, but the point is, you need to recognise a lot of this stuff. And I think this is part of MGTOW. MGTOW, especially we go to MGTOW where it sort of separates and it goes off and does its own thing and does not engage or gets too involved in what women and that are doing. If you want to do that, do it. I don't want to know. Then that's where feminism separates. Because the difference with MGTOW is it's not trying to conflict with women or get in an aggressive motion with them politically or whatever it's actually moving away from that and just saying just stay away from them and um, there's nothing wrong with that at all i know somebody said to me well some of this stuff sounds sounds like it could be a bit of hate speech or something no it's actually just actually recognizing that you have the ability to make your own decisions and a lot of the skewing that goes on is based on when you're most easy to manipulate If you think about when you first start work, you rely on the people around you for everything because you're new to it. You're new to a work environment. You need the knowledge, you need the skills and everything else. So everything they tell you becomes gospel truth, even when they're messing messing around, like asking you to go go and uh, get a long wait from the stores. Um, The point being is that's that's your learning processes that are ongoing. So if you're getting the media fed to you wrong, you're getting a lot of things pushed to you that are actually incorrect. Uh, one of the things I brought up today with Peter was relating to men in the workplace, which is one of the things that I recognize where people could be concerned about approaching somebody, you know, and just saying, do you want to go for a coffee after work or something? in case they're seen as sex harassment in the workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace or something. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the bizarre thing is, you can't actually, if, if for example, a woman went and complained that you had approached them and whatever, for a cup of tea or coffee or whatever, and then complained that you find it inappropriate at the workplace, at no point does somebody say, well, she didn't like it, uh, just don't do it again and move on. or you'd laugh at, you know, maybe she'd laugh it off and not interested, or go, yeah, you know, let's go for a coffee. The the fear factor is being injected into that, predominantly from feminism. That, oh, they, it, you know, they're trying to get something out of you, so, trying to do this, trying to... Why? 
Why why is there so much hate? I mean, the other thing I I do find interesting is that, you know when people talk about well, we won't need men in the future. There's nothing to say we won't need women. Genetics are changing. Um, when I say genetics, I'm not about human genetics. I'm talking about science and being able to. I mean, there was a gram, a uh, gram, a go, lamb. <laughs> I was getting the goat and the lamb. That's why I know what a gram. Um, the a lamb that was grown in a bag. Now, that may sound a bit far off for a human to be grown in a bag, but the whole point being is that it's often pushed that a mother's this, a woman's this, they won't need men, which is often sometimes pushed. And the point being is, you may not need either of us, you may not need men or women, in you know, honesty. The technology's getting there, so don't worry about it. Because um, I do find that some of the arguing that goes out there, you just like, just calm down. Just calm down. Look at it from a bit of common sense. Why do you think we're seeing a destruction of Western society that is seeing some severe fundamental changes without opp uh, sorry without opposition? Sharia law being introduced into the United Kingdom. I have to say. I'm completely against because it is not part of the United Kingdom it's not part of law and quite simply it should not be allowed to happen and it's not because I'm anti this or anti that it's because it's not part of the system and it's not evaluated correctly it's not assessed properly and there's been a lot of stuff that are quietly argued about how Shari Law makes these decisions and what they're doing in the background. But it's not really pushed to the front and it's all sort of done very, very quietly. Because um, there's, a, there's a lot of problems in it, in all honesty. But then again, I do say the same about family courts in the UK. Same thing. It's because a lot of this is not getting covered by media. In fact, I believe if you look, if you did a Google search um, family courts UK jailed you'll find some people have been arrested um, for speaking out about what actually goes on in the family courts and so that there's a there's an important point here and this is one of the things I was saying to Peter earlier it's not a recognition that everything has to be this or that in the sense it's anti this anti religion anti woman anti that it's common sense it's also recognizing that we are in a society that does not give us all the information and often is used to incite hatred and what have you on purpose. Um, if you look at Facebook and Hillary Clinton stuff relating to the stuff they posted, um, relating to people being murdered and things, which is all fake news, there's a prime example of something that could have had or did have a lot of influence in an election. Um, so my answer to this is, quite simply, MGTOW is here to stay. It's not going to go away. If anything, you're probably going to see different levels of it. And, and that's already occurring. But I do recognize that there are certain things that we need in society to function. And a lot of it is being removed because we have people shouting you down for simply telling the truth or trying to inject common sense sometimes. Um, like when people tell me, when I was on about Tommy uh, Robinson and just trying to get him to respond and just ask him a few questions and stuff. A couple of people have said, why do you want to talk to that racist? Well, th that's not the question. The whole point is I'm trying to understand his viewpoints and what drives those views in the first place. And I do not call somebody a racist at any point until I fully understand their background and what's driving things. Because at the end of the day, interpretation is only what we're seeing right now. Getting the correct interpretation is often looking for the stuff that you're not getting shown. Um, and this is why traveling is important for a start, because you get the media from all sides, but also you get to see how different environments function and the corruption and other things that waking you up to the world. Um, but 
I do think that we've got some serious problems that are not being dealt with in the West. And I do think the MGTOW movement will actually grow in strength. Now, whether it becomes more political or not, we'll wait and see. Because my, my own view on this is very simple. The same as I was talking to Peter about um, Tommy Robinson earlier, is when there's a focus on um, pushing him to talk about the, the problems with... Um, Muslim faith in the UK and how it's manipulated etc there was a push on that relating to the grooming rather than focusing on the grooming was a problem or is a problem and the media coverage is a problem and the suppression by the police is a problem and the suppression by local authorities is a problem that's what the focus should have been on in the same way as I said before my, my version of that is well when, they, when somebody says, well, don't whites do that sort of stuff? Yes, it was Jimmy Savile. Same stuff. Media suppression, police suppression, BBC suppression. And then the focus went to uh, good old... Um, oh, what was his name? Uh, Cliff Richard. And what, Now, the question on that was the focus moved on Cliff, Cliff Richard on purpose because it went from arrest, 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 to mess this one up, he's now suing us, all gone quiet. Because my, I don't think 19 arrests were anywhere near correct for around 400 offences just relating to Jimmy Savile alone, never mind other people. So I do question why he suddenly just stopped there. And it was like, he just seemed to like move the media focus away from um, dealing with people that were associated with Jimmy Savile in those time frames to, oh, Cliff Richard's been arrested and uh, he's been found not guilty and now suiting the BBC. And then to get that rug, get that broom under that rug. Um, and that seems to be what the focus has moved to. And that's where I do think you've got to question what information you're being fed. And that is why I could do a comparison with that, with the, the grooming with taxi drivers in the UK because the same sort of stuff goes went on on both and that's why i do think sometimes people get drawn into making self a racial issue etc instead of actually recognizing it can be much deeper than that that we have some serious flaws in the way things are um, being relayed but also how things get so easily buried by people throwing a ball somewhere like to a dog because that's what the media is doing because people don't follow it. They'll, they'll follow it to a point and then say, oh, I'm angry about this, angry about that. Oh, look, Cliff Richard's just been arrested. Oh, has he? And then you you lose what you're actually looking at in the first place. Um, so, yeah, some serious issues. And I do, I do know they go on. And I know um, I've had some people uh, say, oh, it's all, it's all silver foil type stuff. No. No. I've got to tell you honestly that I've actually spent time being involved with community boards and things tied with some of the organisations that I have to work with. So although I'm responsible for things like buildings, which is my main focus, and making sure the buildings function, you've got to remember when you have something like a stabbing outside of the university you're at, you have to go to the same meetings with the heads of that university, the police, people from the community, and try and work out how we're going to stop that happening. Because my responsibility is to make sure the environment's safe, which includes people telling me from the police or whatever that there was no CCTV in that area, there is uh, inadequate lighting, etc. So I do sit on these things from time to time, and I do see it going on. It, it is buried. There's no getting away from it. And to dis make it dismissive by going, well, that wouldn't happen, that just makes your life easier. It doesn't mean it's right. It's mean meaning you're ignoring the problem the, because these things do exist. And it's a scary world out there when people are quite happy to ignore everything, which allows this thing where, like I say, when you used to get a voting system, it's based on the majority being able to vote and making a decision, yes or no. 
Instead, now we have dictating going on from minority groups that tell us what we should be doing and what is equality, what is a right, what sh they should have. And it is what they should have because it's not about everybody else. Um, it's about themselves and their own group. And then they extend it into other things and they keep extending and it becomes an issue with this, an issue with that, and it'll just keep going. And I do think it's a bit of a problem now because there is not enough being pushed back and asking questions, why? Like they're saying with the women police officers that want the same uh, shift allowance, the question should have been why? And they'd be like, well, they're getting paid more. Do the hours. Well, we have a family friendly policy. Not my problem. I don't, you know, some of it is just stupid. And it, this is the problem. Uh, but yeah, MGTOW is not going to disappear. It's, it's actually increasing. And I do think that it, because it's not as focused as feminism, because the one, if you watch that Reggie Yates video, it's very, very focused on uh, trying to make it out as if it was some bad movement because they're very selective on who they used on the show. And then he would walk outside and then do his own version of it rather than asking them the questions to their faces. Um, it allowed manipulation of that media, but also being selective means that you're allowing the removal of people's uh, responses because they're not allowed to say, well, that's not actually correct, Reggie. This is, but you didn't ask me, you wandered off outside and did a five minute talk about me after a one minute interview. Um, and that, that's the thing. And I do think that it's not just about um, men going their own way. I think it's the fact that men and women are recognizing that the world is not so cut and dry as we're dictated and you do have more opportunities and choices out there that you can select where you want to go and that's why i would say MGTOW is probably fairer than feminism feminism has a very political agenda the difference with MGTOW is although it's primarily focused on men a lot of the stuff is not about treating um, somebody badly or something else. It's just recognizing the flaws. It's recognizing the risks and responsibilities. Now, the same can be turned for a woman doing the same from the other side. And that's, that's the thing. Because at the end of the day, a lot of it is about single people. It's not just men. But that's, that's where I think the feminism differs because I mean, there was a, I don't know if I brought this up already, there was a protest here, um, a friend of ours, um, she, she's at a university up in Alicante at the minute. She was, because um, they have days off here to go and protest. You can have, to, we have teachers take days off to go and protest about women's rights and stuff. But they, there was being hijacked from a feminist movement and that's why she didn't go. Um, because they were going for one thing and the feminists had a completely different agenda. And this is one of the problems. That's what I was saying. They start off here, which is like today we're gonna to do this, maybe let's just say let's just say it's Women's Day. Women's Day is this. Oh no, I just opened the can of worms there. Have a look at Women's Day and Men's Day, and you'll see the complete contrast where Women's Day actually promotes um, being more independent, strong, etc. etc. Men's Day is about a completely different set of rules. And what I find, if you read the Wikipedia one, it actually takes into account uh, some women's group in Africa on their opinion on Men's Day. I just found it completely bizarre um, because Men's Day should be a day where men are actually allowed to be men and just do what they, you know. It, it shouldn't just be, oh, well, you've got to be more of a dad on Men's Day because that's coming from a woman's agenda. Um, men's Day should be more a case of, right, what do you do on a Men's Day? Well, you could actually do stuff that promotes health, well-being, um, personal development, uh, education, mentoring other people and do it. You know, 
doing something actually useful but the way they actually just read up on it yourself I'm not, I'm not getting into that too much because the video is nearly three minutes already but anyway thanks for watching